we've put together similar sessions, Ivo and I have put together similar sessions for a few Drupal camps, and we had one in Chicago that was a, a really exciting discussion about sort of somewhere between a community how-to and um, and um, we focus really heavily on local users groups. The things that's that's been going on in Europe. Morning, Christoph. The thing that's been going on, especially in Europe, in the last six months to a year, is a whole set of new events. So the community is trying on splitting into verticals, into interest groups, having a business day, having a design day, having a government day, so that people who who want to work in those areas or who want to find uh, a niche in those areas can really get together and focus on on their special situation rather than just talking about everything about Drupal, let's say. So my personal goal for this conversation is to is to sort of describe where we are and 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 how successful some of these new things have been and and um I've actually brought more questions than answers because I'd really like to get some insight into uh, into how to make this thing grow and work better so. I'd like to introduce my producers, uh, my co-presenters. <laughs> Christoph van Tomme. Uh, your company is called Pronovix. Pronovix. And the most exciting thing that I think he does is uh, a lot of integration between the DITA information architecture system and Drupal. And that's very, very fascinating. Um, this is Ivo Radlovsky from Pro People. I believe you're the CEO of Belgium, Germany, and Austria. Austria of pro people. Uh, Jens Beltofte also works for pro people in Copenhagen. And there's a very vibrant, very, very active Drupal community in Denmark. And, and Jens has got some really interesting insights into how to engage people at the community level. And um, not on the program today because the CMS that the co conference organizers are using had a problem with the form. Uh, this is my friend Lindsay Ogden. She has a Drupal shop called Five Rigs Web and a Drupal startup called Business Catapult. And she's very involved in the Drupal community in Colorado where there's also a lot of crossover into education and evangelizing Drupal at the level of schools and colleges to try and get younger people excited about it and in into the scene. My name is Jam. I work for Acquia. I am the community affairs and manager, so um, this is all stuff that I'm very, very deeply interested in. Ah, and Evo is also community manager at Pro People. He's got two titles I've only got right now. So Christoph, are you gonna kick it off? What we're gonna try and do what we're gonna try and do is each talk for a few minutes and if you have a burning question just throw up your hand and we'll get it in there. Otherwise we're gonna try and maybe talk, present 20, 25 minutes, and then, and then hopefully it'll be interesting enough that we can have a, a conversation together. <coughs> so why organize events? Um, yeah. <laughs> why organize events? Um, I've been doing uh, Drupal events for quite a while now. Um, like my major reason probably was that I wanted to contribute, but I'm not a developer. So and I, I thought, uh, and, and I always liked building community and like, you know, getting people together and doing stuff and initiating new stuff. That's especially initiating new stuff. That's, that's um, um, but I think one of, the, one of the important things when you want to go and organize an event is think, think about yourself, like why are you doing this? And if possible, try to find a business reason why you're doing it. Because it's great, altruism is great, but there's nothing as good as altruism combined with some very enlightened self-interest. Because you're like, there's gonna be tough patches, it's sometimes gonna be hard, and um, it's better that then you can tell your associates like, yeah, but we're doing this because this is gonna get us X, Y, Z. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the next slide. So because because um, as I said, like some people will just do it for their karma. Or I, I think I should really talk with the people that are doing um, certified to rock. That they should 
span their net a bit broader because there's there's a couple of obvious gaps in in the equation, like um, <laughs> if you if you do a Drupal user group and you're not really active on on Drupal.org, that's not going to show up in your certified to rock. Yeah. So to some extent, yeah. So there, there's, there's a, but, but in general, uh, at least in your local community, it's, it's really important. And I've seen that um, being involved, organizing things, has helped, like, getting to know more people. It's not going to give you business. Don't expect business. Not right away. That's not normally it doesn't work. Um, but it's, it's an enlarges your network. You get a lot of loose connections with a lot of different people, and someday you'll need to hire someone and. Um, and um, uh, or or maybe somebody some somebody will hear about a certain customer who's looking for Drupal, and they'll remember like, oh yeah, you were doing this Dita thing, whatever that was, and um, um, like there's somebody who's looking for that, um, like maybe you should get in touch. And I think one of the biggest things is, as I said earlier, uh, recruiting people, uh, finding people that are engaged in the community, uh, like for us in our company. Um, one of the standard questions we ask on an interview is, so what are you doing for the community? How are you already now involved in something community thing? Um, because, you know, if they're not really community people, they're probably not going to engage with the Drupal community. And then that's going to have less, you know, they're not going to be as efficient. Um, <laughs> this is also pretty important. Uh, like, we, um, I organized uh, Drupal CXO, the first Drupal CXO in Brussels. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I did. I did meet some of the other CEOs from uh, from Drupal companies uh, there, and that probably was one of the. Well, that was a really good event for that because it was a small group. You got to know a lot of people that you might have seen on a camp or something. Maybe there was also some people that normally don't show up at camps, but that want to like get in touch with the community, and um, I'm sure that this you know it helps. It builds your image. It helps you in, in the future. Um, <coughs> also really important for events, once you have them, um, you, you can also organize vertical events. Like that's something that they've been doing really well here in London, um, where they pick like very specific verticals, like publishing industry. Um, and then they do a dedicated event for that. Like we did, um, Evo started that uh, Drupal uh, government days. And you know, you had a bunch of government people there, and it helps building your visibility. Like I had one person coming to me saying, "Hey, you were involved in that. Um, do you want to take part in a bit together?" So that that kind of stuff can help you build your credibility in in a vertical segment. And then on to the new types of events. Ivo, okay. do you do that one? So. I've been involved in several types of events, so it, I think it all started in Copenhagen, where we've been sitting together from all kinds of countries, people who organized camps and meetups, and we thought, okay, maybe we should organize something more European. And then it started, I think, with the developer days. And we thought, okay, but there's some mo something more we can think of and so we defined some kind of events that we want to have yearly on a regular base uh, jumping from country to country so yeah and within one year now we had uh, the developer days in Brussels it was a coincidence that I've initiated the <laughs> government days in Brussels too but for me it was in very important uh, to have uh, people from the European Commission participating. So, um, yeah, I, I start probably talking a bit. Uh, that's your part. <laughs> I will so you I thought it already. Okay, so that shows the CXO. Yeah. All right, yeah. We, at the government days, we had drinks. That was cool. And there were more than 350 attendees. It was in Brussels, and it was really important to have local governments, but to have people from the European Commission there, and have people from the European Parliament, and from different kind of uh, agencies, and um, 
yeah, it was a great experience to, to discuss within these people. And uh, there were more, actually, I think there were more people uh, related to a government or it was kind of even. And that was a very interesting experience because the discussions were uh, very, uh, in a very practical because we, we could discuss real solutions uh, that uh, they need and that we develop and offer. So this was yeah a great opportunity. And it's the same with the developer days and with uh, the other kind of events like the design camp and the business days. Right, so yeah, we brought some security to look after documentation. <laughs> Maybe uh, you can say something about yeah. the developer days? So uh, uh, the developer days, uh, that was, um, so we wanted to do uh, re in inter-regional events. That was a new thing. Uh, because before all Drupal camps in, in Europe, like somebody said, oh, we're going to do a Drupal camp. And we've got this team here locally, and we're just going to run it. And that's when uh, last year in Copenhagen, we basically started saying, let's, let's coordinate this a bit better and let's get more involved and kind of get some sort of rotating thing going. And one of the first uh, events there, um, of that type was the developer days. We had, I think it was 600 people or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, that was together with Fullstem. It was Saturday, Sunday, like real hardcore geeks. Um, and um, yeah, as you can see, hack all day or hack all night, sleep all day. Um, but um, but yeah, like a, a lot of companies in Belgium showed up for that because they, they saw it as a really good recruitment opportunity because you got a, all these developers coming in and it was, it was a good opportunity to talk with people. I don't know if it really worked like that way. That's another question. Might help in, in general credibility. Yeah, the, the yeah, the design days in Berlin, the last ones. There, there were there were another uh, design days in Prague, right? Yes, and Boston. and Boston. All right. So yeah, yeah. Not to say uh, not much to say about it. It was a lot of fun. Morton <laughs> is always good for a lot of fun and a lot of interesting topics. So. Yeah, if you're into design. But uh, one really important point was that um, now there's about, uh, yeah, Morton changed the name, I think, to Drupal Front End Camp because, uh, yeah, the main discussion was about teaming and how to implement design. So it wasn't really a good fit. So, yeah, now it's a Drupal Front End Camp. Yes. What's your question? Uh, how, what, how would you compare the attendance of design, a Drupal design event, which is a, which is a kind of a vertical event, compared to a government or these other events? It seems to me like this is for Drupal geeks, right? And, and the other one is, is all kinds of other people. Is that uh, so to repeat the question, uh, how do we compare the people between the different vertical events like design days and government days? And I would say at the design days, we had, there were a few designers, there were a few newbies who were entering Drupal and mostly Drupal geeks, let's say it like this. And at the government days, we had mostly uh, people on the sea level and there were a lot of. Okay, as CEO and managing. So man. Right, and there were, yeah, a lot of people from governments and from from uh, the European Commission, who were actually managing projects with Drupal. So yes, that's, it's a big difference. And that's the importance about the verticals. Because uh, yeah, I don't see a reason why maybe, yeah. Okay. But you so see. So we can have specialized Drupal events. 
Right. Right. Specific specific people that wouldn't attend a Drupal camp. Right. Maybe you should do it. In Colorado, we've done library days, so it's kind of the same idea as the government days. And so it's really a bunch of librarians in the room, and so they're a little more geeky than the general public, but they don't they still aren't understanding necessarily what Drupal can do for them or how to use it. And so a lot of them want to come in and say, we did these cool things, and here's our developer to talk about what we did. And then other people will come in and ask, do the same thing. They'll ask questions like, well, we have this problem. How did you integrate with this um, catalog system? So it's a lot of people, um, not really very Drupal people, asking how other librarians solve technical problems with a few geeks in the room to help give them some guidance. So that's really helpful. Yes, and then we had uh, the Drupal Business Days this year in Helsinki, and yeah, that that was uh, a picture after the CXO, actually. Yeah, that's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not around. But <laughs> yeah, that was the CXO, and it was very interesting. Like. Uh, we had it in Brussels, we discussed best practices and tools we're using, we exchanged uh, yeah, how we approach things, how we approach clients, how we can recruit, how we can uh, train better people and all kind of different aspects of our daily business. And yeah, we had then several sessions, very interesting sessions like comparison of SharePoint and Drupal and Robert Douglas talked about the Drupal ecosystem and uh, yeah, mostly sessions that uh, were related to business and there were people presenting their uh, projects from a business perspective, not from a Drupal shop perspective. And that was interesting too, the actual clients who implement Drupal to have them talking on an event. Yes, and yeah, next year <coughs> we plan to organize the Drupal Business Days in Vienna on the 24th and 25th May. Yes, so you're welcome to join us and to, of course, we'll, we'll set up soon the website and promote the event. One, one, one other thing which is important is um, there's different approaches to organizing an event. Like People often, when they think about events, they start thinking like, oh, I have to charge money, and I have to get money for a venue, and I need a schedule, and I'll have to like curate sessions, and, and it goes on and on. And, and it's so much work that you don't necessarily can do, and that might be discouraging. But it doesn't nec not necessarily have to be like that. Like the Drupal Seek So, that was an open space. Um, what does that mean? Like, we got Microsoft to sponsor the venue, so we, we got the venue for free. They were giving the food. Um, so food, also nothing to worry about. We had one simple website where people could just sign up. It was free. So no money to deal with, no invoices, no, oh my god, I pay too much, or whatever. That, that was also not there. We didn't have a program, because it was open space. It means uh, op an open space technology, frankly, is one of the best formats ever. Uh, because it, so first of all, you don't have to deal with sessions up front. You have to set some general expectations and so that people come. But once people are there, there's always going to be some common things that they want to talk about around that central central topic. And like with the CXO days, um, we we did that, and people keep coming back to me saying that was really good. It was much better than than anything where you had fixed sessions set up because we could actually talk with each other and like share best practices. And I'm, I'm sure that this format goes a long way and we could use it across a lot of different, different places and different niches. Like I'm now planning uh, a Drupal product camp. Um, probably it's gonna be in Ghent, probably it's gonna be this fall. Uh, I still need to do my, my footwork and go and talk with, um, with the venue. But I'm, I'm planning to do it also like that. So, because I, I organized Drupal Seek so almost alone. There were some people reviewing some stuff, and it's manageable. So you you can do you can do a lot, 
um, if you plan for scalability. Don't, don't try to do crazy stuff. Try to keep it simple. Uh, and the simpler, the better. You can make really, really cool events even on a shoestring budget or without a budget. So that, that's the last important thing that I wanted to give with this. Our experience in New York is that that particular format doesn't match, uh, does not scale well for our primary vertical, which is training, which is training. So people, we get lots of people, we get hundreds of people coming to these camps, and the absolute number one uh, feedback that we get, besides that the lunch sucked, um, was <laughs> was that it was there was nothing was scheduled. You know, it was like uh, we got there and no one knew what you were we were going to talk about. No one had. The sessions. There was no schedule. That is absolutely the number one. So in terms of scaling, I think it, w it, it depends on which vertical you're dealing with, and it works really well for small groups. But when you all of a sudden you want to h hundreds of people want to sign up because they want to teach me about Drupal, that particular format does not scale at all. Yeah, this 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 one was for business leaders, which was funny because normally you would expect business leaders to want like more structure and you know, but but it actually worked really well. Uh, and 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 because they could thank uh, they could talk frankly and there were like people like them there that had a lot of experience that was not really formalized a lot of a lot of ideas thoughts but I, I think if you if you talk about training and and yeah well I yeah I think th like an open space is really good um, if there's no clear understanding of what the best practices are yet. So you still, like, everybody's still looking for what, how to do these things. Um, and there's a lot of complexity. The more complexity, the better. Drupal training, like beginner training, is not very complex. It's like, you know, there's a certain number of things you have to learn, and, and you can do that almost, you know, um, um, academic style, right? Um, to some extent. So. Let's take two minutes at the end of this and yell out all the event formats that we can think of and anyone who has experience with what's worked or what hasn't worked or what we think might fit together. Um, that's something that I wanted to explore as soon as I heard you say that. So, so I'll have my notepad and we'll put up notes somewhere. But I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to hear really compactly how, how that might work. Jens, you want to talk about community motivation and participation? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I'll short talk about how we motivate people to join or, uh, or leave actually the local community. I'm not focused on leave because I want people to join. Um, so I'm, I'm um, vice chairman of the Danish Drupal Association and have been involved in all our camps in Denmark and also in the conference in Copenhagen. So for me it's quite important actually we get people involved. It's the biggest problem we have in Copenhagen that there's no people. I mean we have a camp now in one month. We slight have a venue we have looked at. We don't have a website. The ticket system should have been up running last week. I forgot to do that. I didn't have time. And so on and so on. We are two people right now, more or less. Um, so we figured out that back years ago, we had normal meetups where three people were sitting and showing code and examples and three people were listening. That's what we could come up with. It stopped. It's the same people that was going to present every month. So we stopped having one day, maybe uh, every three months or half year, finding a free venue, meet there, maybe some couple of plant sessions, but else spark camp style. People maybe pay five, seven euro to get in to get a sandwich. That works fine. That will 100 people, 150 people show up without a lot of work. Just put up on our website that we have this and this this specific uh, day, this Saturday, we meet at the IT University, people show up. So, um, 
instead of the media ops, we also tried a new thing. We know that all the people in the Drupal community or most people like beer somehow. So we have a monthly day actually, our stamp cheese, which we stole from the German type of free community. Um, so we have the second Thursday every week where we have meet at a bar. Not with sessions, just to drink beers, two, three hours and talk. And actually new people. People also com companies in Denmark that work with Drupal, their employees, they show up. People that have never been involved in planning stuff before or in the meetups or in our uh, Drupal day events show up. So for me that is a success. But again, it's still f only 15 people. And I mean, here we are 70 people from, from Denmark and most of them from Copenhagen. So there are more people that are not showing up. Um, but this is also a, a question actually, I don't have the answer to, but one I think it could be interesting to hear your comments on uh, in the end when we are finished with the slides. And this actually with the um, with com uh, getting people to commit in the Drupal community and participate, it's really important actually for planning a, a Drupal camp. If you don't have, have people, we cancel our Drupal camp in the sp in spring because we didn't have people to to commit them to uh, to help with the with planning it. Uh -oh. So in Colorado, we have about four regular meetup groups. We have Northern and Southern, we have a Western group, and we have the Denver-Boulder uh, meetup groups, which alternates between Denver and Boulder, and they each meet monthly. So there's quite a, bo quite a bit of um, an active community in Colorado. Um, but in the Northern group, we really only have about 10 active members, and uh, we're trying to figure out, I guess I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but we're really trying to figure out how to get um, how to get more people to come in, how to get more people just into Drupal, um, how to, how do we motivate people who are sitting in their, really sitting in their shops. I mean, we must have 10 Drupal shops in our town, Fort Collins in Northern Colorado. How do we get them to want to come in to, um, to come to the meetup groups and have free pizza and beer, which I'm usually paying for, um, <laughs> to be frank. Um, you know, how, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking, I think we're all asking this question is, we have a room full of people here, and I'm curious what other people have done to get people out of their hidey holes and, um, you know, the cracks in the wood to come out and do these things, and how do we express to them what they're going to get out of it, which is more than just pizza and beer. It's, um, you know, learning a new way to use Drush. It's um, having someone to call on when you have two theming projects and 24 hours to do them in. You know, it's it's all of those little um, kind of grungy benefits that we all need as geeks. Um, not even talking about the business side of it. So, um, I guess we'll get to that more at the end. But what? Yeah. So in Bulgaria, for example, we we've been doing a lot with universities, and I think that's important to get uh, people out uh, of yeah wh when they start uh, to learn developing to engage them with Drupal so for example we we've been uh, having sessions on universities and um, yeah cooperating with them uh, they've been featuring us on their website uh, putting flyers everywhere when we have the events and stuff like this so uh, yeah we kind of try to engage universities and uh, get people new people from there so So, yeah. Yes? So, yeah. The question is how do we engage universities, right? And it's usually not different than how we engage companies. We 
tell them, okay, we have a conference here, we have a meeting here. It's about uh, Drupal, that's an international uh, used system, uh, very uh, well adopted in universities, governments, and we have the examples of the Stanford University or this university or this government and that government. And uh, they're really interested to hear more about it. And, uh, and then we ask them directly, uh, can you support us to to engage the students and to get them to learn more about the system and yeah that's how we've done it and it worked so and the other thing was we've used uh, fr <coughs> friends who know uh, people at the university professors and uh, so yeah we're trying through different channels to get closer to the university um, we actually um, we started or I started before Drupal Khan Seged, that was, I think, in 2007, um, I went to the university and uh, to the IT department because I thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun if we could do like some, all, you know, um, a voluntary course about Drupal at university? Um, so I got this appointment with the head of a uh, department of uh, um, engineering, software engineering. And I do my story as like, oh, that sounds cool. Uh, by the way, we also have this trainee program where you can like get students to work for you part time. And then, uh, and, and so, so we got them to that. We, we started this course. And one year later, he had one of his employees who, who also, um, who was really interested in Drupal, who uh, started giving that together with me. Um, and, then, um, and then basically, now they have a, a Drupal team in the university that's doing Drupal projects. I think they're like, I think six or seven people or something. Um, and they're like, you know, pure Drupal team. So, so uh, there's different ways. Some universities, this is not going to run, right? Um, it depends a bit on how open they are for, for external speakers. <coughs> uh, because what I did was like a, a two day course, um, pretty intensive, like all day, like almost all day long. And then with a with a practical thing next to it, so that it was not too much work for me either, uh, or you know, two days and that was it, and that worked really well. Uh, yeah, we had for example seven sessions at the Sofia University, and later at the camp they they sent people to the training too, so th because they want to get involved more themselves, like in your case. I, I'm actually very impressed by that. Um, I'm I live in Germany and. Uh, actually know from certain examples in the United States that um, we've approached universities for different uh, different strategies, different approaches. How do you like to, you know, we offer our expertise to give, I mean, fundamentally, we're offering sort of real world employable skills for the students now if they'll let us in and we want to come in for free because we want to talk about Drupal. Um, and we can't get in. There's a lot of turf protection, a lot of, you know, professors who either think, well, you know, that's all just money making and it's not the world's most beautiful code. Um, or, you know, they're worried that, um, you know, if their students see someone making a salary working in, in the web, you know, that they'll run away. Or there are, I know in the United States, there are all kinds of certification issues. And if you want to, you know, talk about any given subject, you have to run it past a government board and you have to run it past a bureaucracy and you have to run it past a <coughs> approval process that can take a couple of years, um, at which point your proposal about, um, you know, Drupal 5 is, is out outdated and then you maybe you're not allowed. So, so I'm, I'm really fascinated to hear that there are ways in and I'm interested if, if you, did you, were you using some sort of backdoor strategy or is there a, just a different kind of a system in place? I think the biggest difference is that these are voluntary courses. So they're not part of the core curriculum. So they're like, you know, um, an IT student might have to take some voluntary courses in psychology, or, you know, they can choose themselves from all over the university. It's, I don't know the exact term, but, but that, that is a lot easier. Uh, you just need one professor to say, oh, that sounds fun, let's do it. And then, and then they can sponsor it and, and get it through. The other thing you might consider is talking to Microsoft because they have a really good program all through all the universities and actually um, they're open for collaboration on that. So 
at least in Europe, I know the person who can help you help you. Well, they they've got people actually working on that. The other piece uh, that, that I've been trying to set up in my hometown is working with high school students to, um, um, so I, I do it with Drupal Gardens because it's a really easy way to have something running that looks okay. Um, to get high school kids building their little home pages and embedding YouTube videos and, and, and working with Drupal uh, to get them excited about it. So I'm, I'm actually trying to come in on a, on a lower level as well. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right, I, yes. So, so just to repeat this for the recording, um, um, you, person in gray sweater, <laughs> are, are are saying that um, it's it's hard to motivate and and get people excited about Drupal uh, when you present them a really super dry technical. Let's start with the basics. Click, 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 click all day. Um, without giving them either a vision or a finished product to sort of start with and play with first or to, to make it fun and interesting so that they can see the point right from the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so there, there's this Lego analogy which, which seems to be growing in the community. And, and for me, it is, it is the difference between be maybe being presented with a Lego set that can make 12 different spaceships, right? Or you have, because Drupal's. Drupal is powerful and flexible, right? So we have this gigantic box of blue Lego bricks. And over here we have this gigantic box of gray Lego bricks. And if you're smart enough, you can you know, do anything you want. And there's no photo, and it's just like five lines of text, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a perfect analogy. Yes. So. So the perfect Lego set starts with photos on it to inspire you to build something. And it's not just a bin of bricks. That's fantastic. I'm going to write that down as soon as somebody wants to interrupt me. <laughs> um, I think this, was this my slide originally? Oh, Jens. That was mine. I have a comment about the education. And I have one more question about your, what you were talking about before. Um, when we were preparing this session, you were talking um, briefly about people who come in and then their interest sort of peaks and they disappear and, and, and uh, you know, if the patterns that you'd recognized. And I don't know if you have any insights around that, but I, I found it really fascinating. Well I, well, I don't have any uh, solution to that, actually. But we see it quite often when we're making the events that we have, a, actually, it's not open and everything. We have a Skype chat with, with 20 people or something. It's been running for since second, I think. New people are added and some are leaving, and we are planning stuff there. It's maybe not the best tool, but <laughs> it works fine. Um, and we can see that people are now and then popping up and, okay, I want to help with this and this and this, and then they just disappear for two months. We had one of our camps, a guy that was going to do a lot of stuff, he disappeared. No one could find him, even get, uh, get in contact with him on his phone. He showed up to the camp. Okay, just just go away. I mean, it's the same. He did the same with DrupalCon actually. Um, so now he has no part of it anymore. But it's it's the problem we have. And in relation to the education at the universities, we have in Copenhagen actually success with the um, with the IT university. There's like a dedicated IT university in Copenhagen. Not like where they write a sampler code and machine code and stuff like that. <coughs> More like you can take a master degree uh, in IT. For example, if you have another education, you can build IT on it. And um, we have four or five or more of the really good developers in Denmark, Drupal developers, that are, have studied there. So they had a door in, and they have been doing a basic Drupal education and training some afternoons. So it's not a part of the, the, the education you get on the, the, um, on the, on the university, but it's something that the students can meet, uh, show up to if they want. 
and we also have actually now we are trying to approach some colleges it's in 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 Copenhagen um, where modern DK and some others has been um, telling them about uh, about Drupal. Add on on the question that is on the screen. Um, I've been going to a lot of different events like bar camps and media media camps and Linux events and I I find it very interesting uh, to engage the people uh, that have related interests uh, on other events and uh, to actually connect the dots and uh, involve people from different communities in into the Drupal community. So I find it kind of interesting to go to these other events too and, and meet people there and engage them with Drupal. Okay, do we have another? Okay, so, Questions. yeah. Now I set the level for participation too high. <laughs> so I don't know how many of you were here um, yesterday on the, not here in this, but in the scaling, uh, the local communities presentation by Greg and uh, Angie. And they were talking that a problem that was seen was the separation. So th in the early days, everyone was in the pound um, Drupal IRC and in the forums and people started splitting into newbies and developers, uh, core developers, into different areas. And I, I feel the same thing is happening with the cons, because we're all coming to the DrupalCon and it's fun, but oh my God, the fun I had in Brussels in the dev days. It was amazing. I mean, here, okay, half of the things I don't care, so I remove. In the dev days, I was like, oh my God, I have to I have to clone myself and go to all of these at the same time because they were really nice. <laughs> and s that's the problem with verticals. Are we, by creating these vertical events, separating ourselves into <laughs> different groups? And is there a danger? I think it's natural. By the way, that's Boris there. He was the co-lead of the dev days. <laughs> <laughs> Together with somebody, but he's not here. Um, so. Um, splitting off, I think it's normal. It's like com the Drupal community is like a fractal. If you look at the Drupal community, basically you see that it's it's really like a fractal. You 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 got you first it started growing and started forking, uh, like well not forking but it started branching, and it's deep the branches grow, they branch again. They're s they're still connected, but it's a natural thing. It's every community is like that. Um, this this is the the, the, the the nature of networks. Uh, so n I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's actually a good thing because it di it diversifies our community, and it it helps in in you know preparing us for for shocks in in the in the uh, environment because we get a, a broader base and we get more diversity. If you know if IRC if uh, Freenode goes down or you know they close it down, there's going to be other c communication channels and we'll be able to reboot. So I think it's very healthy. Um, I, I actually take it as a really, really good sign that you got so excited at that event because, um, and I think that that's, that's actually an essential tool to making the community scalable because a DrupalCon now, how many people are here to do deals? How many people are here to shake hands? How many people are, you know, there's all kinds of reasons. Now if we think back to DrupalCon, Brussels, where there were 220 people, I think. That was extremely geeky, you know, <coughs> and extreme, and extre I mean, really amazing. Um, and, you know, I knew the whole Drupal community, okay? Um, so we can't do that anymore. And a vertical event allows you to hook up with your coder buddies and really get into that stuff that you're excited about, right? And the same for the designers and the same for the people who want to convince enterprise business to go with Drupal so that we can all pay our rent with it. Um, and I think it's, a, it's actually a perfect tool to, uh, to help ourselves stay excited, stay connected with 
with what really, really interests us, and then we still have the global possibilities of the con and the, and, and the forums and the IRC channels and the, all these other, I, I, think that's, I think that's a way to really l leverage the size and, and maintain a, a, a good circle of, of, of relevant you know, acquaintances <coughs> within the community. I, I, I take that as a really good sign. No. I can't have a beer with everyone here. I, I got the biggest compliment um, a month ago when I was at, in Boston. Uh, a colleague of mine, who was it, Peter? You were there. A colleague of mine said to his wife, oh, oh, it was Mike. It was Mike. Jam's really good at drinking beer. That's why you're in Germany. I do live in Germany. So I'll, I'll repeat the question while uh, his question was um, in a relatively small community like in Greece, um, local meetups are working, but what kind of people should go? Um, what, what, what should the purpose be? Who sh who's the audience? I think you shouldn't define that. Um, I think it should be anybody who wants pizza and beer or whatever it is that's your local delicacy. And uh, people who want to learn about what? And uh, yeah, I'm not going to pay for your Greek pizza. I'm so sorry. Um, it should be it should be anybody who's who's interested in figuring out how to make an image gallery. It should be anybody who's interested in figuring out how to make an online forum to chat with their teenage buddies. Um, and we get people anywhere from 16 to 60 at our groups. Uh, we have a, a couple of librarians who come. We have. Um, Literally, a, a couple of guys who work at Staples, uh, you know, an office supply store during the day, and um, I can kind of throw them a quick here, make this very simple view for me at night, and I'll pay him fifty bucks, right? So, and that makes him feel all good, like now he's a Drupal freelancer, um, which he is. And and that, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but I feel like it's it's a wide variety, and we need to be attracting all of them. Actually, I have an answer for that. Uh, we have what we call the Fort Collins Internet Professionals Group, which is a much bigger group, and it's all internet professionals in northern Colorado. And it's WordPress developers, it's Joomla developers, it's Cake PHP, it's any kind of web development at all. And people come and they talk about semantic web, and they talk about CSS, and they talk about um, search engine optimization, they talk about anything and everything. We have an entrepreneur track, and we have a business track, and that meets so w once one of those. So that way, I get to talk to people from different kinds of web development professions, and that has really helped me bring in other people, other um, other developers, and other and and that is more that is much broader. There's more people, and so you're using that social network to bring in other new people. Would you bring a potential client to a meetup? Like that? Absolutely, I would definitely bring a potential client t to something like that, and yeah, maybe I'll lose them, but you know. Um, uh, to me, the important part is to get them educated about the technologies that are out there, what their options are. If they want to go with Joomla, meh, you know, then they're going to do that. And so I think that maybe, maybe a place to start in a really small area without enough Drupal traction is to start a whole internet professionals group, would be my opinion. two or three people each, so they're very small. Okay. The question was about the size of uh, my community. Um, so the town I live in, Fort Collins, is about 120,000 people um, in about, um, I guess we're about, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's kind of a lot. Uh, and then we have, we have another community just to the south of us, another one called Greeley that's just to the west of us, so I'm going to guess at about a half a million people altogether. 
in uh, it's 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 in in about a three hour radius of driving, but uh, we all everybody comes up to Fort Collins as the main central hub for that. So there aren't any big shops up there, but a lot of little freelancers and two or three person shops, yeah, or marketing firms with a Drupal component. So he was saying he set up a group of professionals who have a common interest, um, not necessarily in Drupal or its specific technology, but that they can exchange. Uh, they are Drupal media professionals, right? Right. Okay. Yes. Per, per, so, so a, a, a vertically organized Drupal professionals group. So, I just wanted to add anyone who is here in uh, at this session in Chicago. Um, I ha I was campaigning very strongly for sustainable meetup practices, and uh, the cunning people who organized the Cologne meetup have now <coughs> d um, created a, a web meetup, and it's the Drupal users group that runs it. But it's a web meetup, and we're getting an incredible, incredible traction. We're getting meet all of a sudden we're getting monthly meetups with 80 or 100 people, and it really feel like it's it's moving. A web meetup. Those are web professionals. Those are people who want to know about Facebook or you know and <coughs> no no, but it's web people. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, last question. Ah, yeah, beer is a multiplier for free speech, generally. <laughs> I actually think the free pizza is a whole different metaphor, because that's also freebies. I mean, it's like... We actually have um, our Northern Colorado meetup group. We actually have we actually have a whole plan set up. Hopefully this fall it's going to be coming forward is to figure out an ongoing training program, um, probably twice a month to have and as well as a drop in base as well. So we'll, the plan is to have a once a week slot that anybody can drop in at this location at this time. There will be professional Drupal people on site um, to answer questions and help people out with their projects, etc. And then every other week, we're going to move forward on building some sim simple little project, whatever that project is, and, and then, of course, publish the recipe for that. Um, and I just lost the thread of what you were saying now. I was trying to... Ex
Right, so that's where I was going with that, was that uh, was the idea that we don't want to just spoon feed them. We want to show them how to use IRC. We want to show them how to use the forums. We want to show them how to um, how to figure out the learning curve of Drupal. And um, we also want to help weed out some of the, some of the chaff, because we don't want to just handhold people along their learning curve. If they can't handle that painful Drupal learning curve, to some extent, we, we don't necessarily want them here in the community. As, as harsh as that is to say, we want people who are going to work hard and want to work to learn that, right? So um, we have to, f it's, I think that's a delicate balance. We have to figure out how to bring them along in the, the learning without um, bringing in people who really can't hack it with Drupal because it's not easy. So, so I'm, I'm still very curious. We've only got a couple minutes now. Um, I'm, I'm still really curious to learn about event models that and, and what you feel they're appropriate for. Maybe we can just do that at the table, anyone who's got any ideas about that. Um, the last thing I wanted to bring up um, is, is basically my personal homework for the next six months. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's match that into that. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> so I, I, I'm in the <coughs> very privileged position um, that Acquia wants me to figure out how to help grow the community and um, that as a company, uh, uh, you know, they're willing to invest in that kind of activity. Um, I want to understand, so with, especially with your, uh, your point, I, I, I actually mean all of this in a much more positive way. I don't want to trap people in, right? But I want people to feel engaged and excited, okay? But actually, what I really need to figure out now for myself, um, and then hopefully we can turn it into, into people, into numbers, into deals, into developers, is how do we break out of our out of our very, very beautiful echo chamber that we're in. Like, we love this, and I see you, and I see you, and I see you, and I see you, and then you're my friends, and it's great, and we are making a living at it, but, you know, we need devs, and we need clients, and we need people who don't know about Drupal yet, people to, to, to find us and to get excited about it, or to, you know, or to buy our services, and, and you know, we have very charismatic, interesting local meetups, and we have all these events, and, and, and I'm, I'm looking for a tool set for ideas for, for, for ways to, 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 to break us out of the box we're in, and, 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 and I, don't, I don't know how to get there yet. <coughs> this is not the microphone again. Acqui is in a, in, in a very unique position that everybody wants to be your partner. So you've got a network of companies that are established at local level that not necessarily are involved with the communities, but they are involved with Acquia. You could um, force them, well, coerce them <laughs> into the fact that they maintain some kind of partnership with you would, um, they would need to prove that they are sponsoring, that they're organizing something with local communities. That's, that, yeah, ah, community partner is, is nice. So, yes, 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 and we're doing these Hello Drupal trainings and we're doing um, certain kinds of free developer trainings to get developers crossing over from other systems. I, I, a community partner model with us would be really great. Um, I was wondering, um, to, to wrap this up maybe, um, that's a, that's a, that is a really great idea. It's distinctly political and, and it's not what I wanted to talk about here so much. But, but th you people who've run events where Drupalists bring in government partners or bring in business partners, or do can we make them feel p like they're part of Drupal and like they're part of the community? They're not just, you know, <laughs> getting, getting a Drupal lap dance um, and, and a website when they come to one of, forgive me, I mean that just, you know, they're getting a free pizza and a website and I would like them to come away feeling like I have a partner, these, all these people have my back and I want to be with them, you know, they, they're working for me now but I'm, I'm, can we make them feel part of it? I've heard this many times actually from these people who have been newly engaged and they were really excited about approach of developing this software and about our approach of gathering and exchanging and sharing information so they've been really excited about this and they wanted more of it so okay, i think it works so then we, c we should convince them to, to give back too right 
That's right. Absolutely. I think actually, to some extent, we did that already just by organizing it. Like it was the Belgian government who was sponsoring most of it. So that was, and they organized a training at the event. So, so of course, you know, <coughs> there, there will stay, um, well, uh, you know, it's government, so <laughs> it has a certain, a certain style. I think the other thing is to, to like there was um, the, the, like the problem of volunteers that come and go away. The thing you have to be careful with is people that overcommit. That's really bad. People that say, I will do it, and then nobody else does it. But else, is, um, the coming and going away is very natural. People evolve. Um, there's always going to be some people that, you know, they're student now, and they have one or two years that they uh, do like, like crazy. And afterwards, they, they, f they ebb away. That's normal. Um, it's just keep getting more people involved. So I, I have a vision of, of, of doing the next edition of this session, um, calling it uh, Creating Drupal Stakeholders, Events, Communities, Promotion. And thank you. I think we really are out of time. Thank you for coming. Anyone who has any insights about event tools and styles and models, I'm very, very interested to learn. My name is Jam. I work at Acquia. My email is jam at acquia.com. My Twitter handle is horncologne. And any of the insights that I've gained out of here, um, I'll, I'll maybe I'll put up a link to that. I think that I think that we can attach something to the event uh, to the session note still. Uh, yeah, we can attach them on the website. Right. We'll pu we'll put up some some we'll put up we'll add some things to the con website. We'll make sure that we can uh, keep this discussion going. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone.